Notre partenaire offre au candidat le jeu officiel qui veut gagner des millions. Il contient près de 2000 questions inédites, les trois jokers et les fameux millions. Now it's time to meet tonight's 10 brand new contestants. They are Sarah Maloney from London, Drew Cole from Belfast, Angie Richards from Middlesex, Peter Dixon from Warwickshire, Graham MacDonald from East Lothian, Paul Falbeck from Kent, Steve Alsop from Warwickshire, Glenn Gladwell from Middlesex. Jill Murray from the West Midlands and Jeff Gross from Surrey. OK, that's your ten contestants. Tuesday night, fastest finger first. Whoever puts four answers in the correct order in the fastest time is next tonight to play for a possible £1 million. Audience, nice and quiet, please. We need to concentrate for this. Fastest finger first. Here comes the question. Starting furthest north, put these lines of latitude in the order Captain Scott crossed them Travelling from the UK to the South Pole. Antarctic Circle, Tropic of Capricorn, Tropic of Cancer, Equator. It's one of those that may not be as hard as it actually seemed when the initial question came up. Let's see. This is the right order. Uh, Tropic of Cancer, uh, and then going down, it's the equator, obviously zero degrees, then it's Capricorn, and then obviously down in the south, uh, it's the Antarctic Circle. Cancer, equator, Capricorn and Antarctic Circle. That's the right order. Now, ten started. How many got it right? Was it ten? Three were right. Who was fastest? Jeff Gross! Yeah! In 5.95 yeah. seconds! <laughs> Jeff, you made it! Oh, He's so excited! Oh. Now, would you like to play for a million English oh, pounds yes, while you're please, passing? Yes, yes, please. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> this very excitable man is Jeff Gross, <laughs> an IT manager, originally from America but now living in Richmond in Surrey. Uh, despite being a Yank, Jeff says he's a huge fan of the UK version the original version of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Jeff's been so keen to get in the hot seat himself. He even made a cardboard keypad <laughs> so he could practice playing fastest finger first. It sounds dark, but it clearly wasn't. It worked. He got it. Unlike the time he dressed up as a head swan for a Club Med production of <laughs> Swan Lake with flippers for ballet shoes and balloons for boobs. <laughs> He's a strange man. However, tonight, his strategy is not to be so impulsive and to read every question twice right. before answering. I tell you what, Jeffrey. Having met you briefly, I bet you don't keep to that strategy. You don't think so? I bet you. <laughs> I've never, I have to say, this guy. I've never known anyone so desperate to get into this hot seat. You, you say you are the most ardent fan of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. I am definitely one of the most ardent fans of this show. Yes. What is it about the show then? I mean, it's a fine show in well, its way, but what is it about it? That well, gets... I, I grew up um, back in America, just being a, a huge fan of game shows, uh -huh. and then I, I moved to the UK, and just about two or three weeks after I got here, I saw your show. And I just said, this is the most fabulous quiz show I've ever seen in my life. And it's a very intelligent perception. <laughs> <laughs> in an American sort of way. Yeah, and, so, and I mean, you, you just want to be here. Ah, it's, it's, just, it's just amazing. I came to a taping one time, and, and that, was, that just, just set me off. I just knew I had to keep trying. You say the hardest questions always are those first five. I've, it, it just always seems to work that way, that, that the first few, there always seems to be one big pig of a question in there. Yeah. You're not, um, you're not necessarily always lucky because you once went for a job in the very, very early days with Microsoft. Yes, that was my first chance to become a millionaire and obviously... I'm, and how, I'm not in yet, those so days there, were, there was hardly anybody there in this little company? I think th there were about 20 people. Um, I was interviewed after university and uh, later on I, I read a biography of Bill Gates yeah. and there were some pictures in the center and I happened to see this guy that interviewed me. Yeah. Uh, and he was employee, I think, number 20 or something like that of the company. Oh. So. <laughs> you, see, you would almost certainly be... A shareholder by now. Uh, yes, yes, I would. Like. <laughs> you, wouldn't, you wouldn't even be bothering to come here and sit in that chair. Okay, well, lots of luck tonight. Fifteen questions, three brand new lifelines. Jeff, lots of luck. Now you're here. Good luck. Let's play. Who wants to be a millionaire? Okay, so it's the first five that are the worst. Then, yes. Jeffrey. Question: Nobody has ever gone out 
at this point. Question number one for £100. Okay. No pressure. Which word goes after train and talent to make the names of a hobby and a job? Dotting, totting, blotting, spotting. It has to be spotting, Chris. You sure? Yes, I am. Final answer. Final answer. It's the right answer. Uh, uh, £100. <laughs> Question number two, Jeff, for 200 quid. Here it comes. What name is usually given to an unauthorised revelation of official information? Seep. Gush. Leak. Squirt. That's leak, Chris. Right answer, you've got 200 pounds. <laughs> OK, question number three, this is for 300 pounds. Which city gave rise to the Mersey Beat? A pop music sound of the 1960s. Cardiff, Edinburgh, Liverpool, Glasgow. Oh, that's Liverpool, Chris. It did quite well in America as well. Yes. It wasn't the Cardiff sound. <laughs> no. It's the right answer. You've got £300. People like the Beatles, Jerry and the Pacemakers, etc., uh, etc. Et Mercy Beats and Co. Right, you got 300 quid. This is for 500 pounds. You're two away from a guaranteed 1,000. This is for 500 quid. Which of these is another name for the star sign Gemini? The twins, the triplets, the quadruplets, the quintuplets. That's definitely the twins. It's the right answer. You got 500 pounds. <laughs> Right, this is question number five. It will guarantee you 1,000. Good luck. Here it is. Which of these phrases refers to a very large amount of money? King's Council. King's English. King's Shilling. King's Ransom. Glad that came up. King's Ransom is the answer. Not King's Shilling. <laughs> That's not a large amount of money. <laughs> it's the right answer. You've got 1,000 pounds. <laughs> Good night, Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> £1,000 sterling, of course, not $1,000. Right, you've got £1,000 guaranteed. You've got all three lifelines. Feel OK? A lot better, thank you. <laughs> That's good, OK. Uh, question number six is for £2,000. You might as well play this. You guaranteed that £1,000. Have a look at it. Tell me what you want to do. You're ten away from one million. Here it is. In the Middle Ages, which fabric was worn as a sign of penitence? Silk. Velvet. Sackcloth. Taffeta. Hmm. I think I have an inkling, but it's been an I, inkling sort of night tonight. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm not sure enough to guess, so I think I'll ask the audience. Okay, uh, they'll know. Audience, on your keypads, please, everybody. This is the question. Let's get Jeff up to two thousand pounds. Uh, in the Middle Ages, which fabric was worn as a sign of penitence? A, B, C or D, all vote now. Now, you know your inkling. That was it. You <laughs> little liar, Geoffrey. <laughs> Geoffrey, we have a phrase here in England, liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> Are you going to think sackcloth? I did think sackcloth, and, and that will be my answer, yes. So that'd be right if it's wrong. Final answer. <laughs> Final answer, Chris. It's the right answer. You got two thousand pounds. Question number seven is for four thousand pounds. You got a fifty-fifty left. You can phone a friend. Here it is. If a college sportsman is picked for the first fifteen, which sport does he play? The first fifteen. Cricket, soccer, rugby union, field hockey. It's rugby union, Chris. How would you know that, being an American person? Um, well, I live in Richmond, which is near Twickenham, and I know... Oh, yes, they do have a bit of rugby around yeah, Richmond. Yeah. yeah, and I know there's 15 players on a rugby union side. I know there's no trick questions on millionaires, so I hope that's... Well, not normally, Jeff. 
<laughs> are there, are no, there are no trick questions. Uh, play? Yes, I'll play that. I'll play that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just won four thousand pounds. <laughs> Have a look at question number eight for £8,000. Uh, you've got 50-50, you've got phone a friend left. Have a look, you can double your money, give me the right answer. What nationality is the pop singer Mariah Carey? American, Australian, Canadian, Irish. Yeah, she's one of ours. She's an American. Oh, one of our... Lives in Richmond. <laughs> oh, one of ours now, <laughs> when it suits you. <laughs> Just now, you were a keen English rugby fan. <laughs> Are we going for Mariah Carey being an American person? Yes, we are. It's the right answer. You've got £8,000. Yeah. Yeah. You're in a bit of a roll, Jeff. You've got £8,000. You've got a 50-50. You've got to phone a friend. Uh, take your time. Tell if you want to play question number nine. Canada is divided into provinces on what else? States. Counties. Shires, territories. The answer is definitely territories. Definitely. Final answer? Yes, final answer. It's the right answer. Sixteen thousand pounds. The right there is Canada. <laughs> right, you got sixteen thousand. You're hanging on here, doing well. You've got uh, two lifelines. Question number ten is this for thirty-two thousand. The school, Dother Boys Hall, features in which Dickens story? Nicholas Nickleby, Martin Chuzzlewit, Oliver Twist, David Copperfield. Hmm. Fortunately, not up on my Dickens. Um. Chris, I think I'll take the 50-50. Okay. Uh, computer take away two wrong answers. Leave Jeff the right answer and one remaining wrong answer. Does that help? Not a lot. Not a lot. <laughs> they all sort of sound the same, don't they? They do, I know. Sorry, Charles Dickens, if you're watching, but they do. <laughs> I'm going to have to phone a friend. Okay. Who are you going to phone? I'll phone David. David? Okay, where's David? David's in Los Angeles area. Oh, great! <laughs> <laughs> All right! So, it'll be, uh, actually, it's okay, it'll be sort of mid morning there, won't it? Uh, yes, that's right. Okay, yes, we'll phone David in Los Angeles. Right, okay. Hello? David? Yes. Hi, it's Chris Tarrant here on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire in London, in England. Hello, Chris. Hiya. Uh, I've got Jeff here, Jeff Gross. Now, he's stuck on one oh. particular question. Okay. Uh, there are only two possibilities. One is right and one is wrong. It's worth £32,000. All right? All right. Okay, David, good luck. Jeff, 30 seconds. Your time starts now. Hi, David. Hi, this, the school Dothaboy's Hall features in which Dickens story? Is it Nicholas Nickleby or Oliver Twist? It's Nicholas Nickleby. Oh, thank you, David. Bless I'm 100% sure. Oh, thank you very much. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Thank God. <laughs> you sounded um, very, very confident. I like 100% sure. That's, that was good. <laughs> you might be 100% mad, of course. No, that's true. It comes from my family. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with this answer. Nicholas. Final Nicholas. answer. Final answer. It's the right answer. You've got 32,000 yes. pounds. That was worth living in Los Angeles, oh, wasn't it? They absolutely. Are. Now, you want to take it? You can hold it. Oh, no, keep it safe for me, Chris. Really? OK, yeah. I'll keep it safe in mind. <laughs> no, I'll keep it safe for you over here. Whatever happens, Jeff, you've got that tonight. Oh, you've used up all your lifelines, but you're only five away from a million. The next question is worth £64,000. You're guaranteed 32000 Good call to Los Angeles. We're back in a couple of minutes with the third part of tonight's Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Join us again. <laughs> Thank you.